Hey guys, Tomboy61, and today we have the good old Montana, the American legendary battleship that was just added to the game. If you like this review and you want to see more like it, make sure you hit that like and you hit that subscribe button. Um, just a little forewarning to get out of the way. Uh, this ship was provided to me by Wargaming for rent for a week because I am one of the community contributors. So uh, I think this technically makes this sponsored by them, maybe, depending on YouTube's rules. Anyways, as always with our reviews, we'll go over the commander module stats, uh, a little bit of the history, then show off a game in the ship. So if that sounds like a good old time, make sure you stick around and uh, like and subscribe. Anyways, let's now just go ahead and dive on in to the commander and we will be running the good old William Sims. I'm sure you are familiar with him because he's probably the go-to American battleship commander. Uh, his base trait is gonna help you, uh, it's gonna boost the HP of the ship per uh, each tier by a certain number of points. Inspirations for running Scharnhorst and Nikolai Von Essen. Von Essen to uh, really help with that AP pen angles because you're gonna be firing AP a lot from this ship and uh, any chance to get just that much better of a uh, hit, you'll absolutely take it in Sharn Horse just to boost the accuracy that little bit more. Then the other skills we're running is Flamble Cannoneer, Gyrating Drill Bits, Marksmanship, Reaching Out XXL, and Will to Rebuild. As far as the modules go, in the first slot, we are running uh, secondary battery mod one i like this just because uh if you need the secondary batteries you're gonna want it of course uh with it being an american battleship you don't have the main battery mod one available to you the one that usually you know tightens up dispersion the one that you kind of go to the other option is this ship is very impressive with its aa um if you find yourself in a lot of aa matches and a lot of carrier matches i absolutely think aa mod two would be a viable pick but uh, given the current popularity of aircraft carriers, I don't see a viable really pick for using that. In the second slot, we're gonna be using steering gear mod two. Uh, you could probably switch it out for propulsion mod depending on your style of play. For me, uh, steering gear mod one was my go-to. Next, we only have one choice, sadly, in this third mod slot. So target acquisition mod is going to be what it is. And then finally, we're running artillery plotting room, which is going to uh, boost that dispersion by 11%, which uh, once again, helps tighten up that accuracy, tighten up that dispersion, makes you for some very happy shots. As far as consumable goes, we don't have a full complement of them. Uh, we only have three. First one is gonna be that damage control party. You know it, you love it, you know you've seen it all around. Uh, 20 second duration with an 80 second reload time. Next one is going to be the repair party. It's gonna heal 775 points of damage per second. Uh, consumable duration is 16.8 seconds. It's gonna reload in 80 seconds and it's gonna have three charges. And then finally, we have the catapult fighter or the spotter plane or the enhanced secondary battery. Notice that with both of the planes, you do get six of them. Um, I don't think if you ran the uh, spotter plane that you would have the ability to run all of them if you use them as quick as you can. Um, I'm running catapult fighter just as a boost to AA and a way to help see over some mountains and such when that kind of need arises. And that's all of the, and those are the consumables and mods for the ship. Now, let's go ahead and talk those beautiful, beautiful stats. So, stats of the vessel, hit points 89,640. Of course, these stats, sorry, are with the current build with Sims. Um, so, uh, 89,640 hit points with an armor thickness between 6 and 541 millimeters. Has 32, uh, 32 millimeters of bow armor and its deck armor is between 32 and 38 millimeters. So uh, really, really uh, kind of impressive there. It's, it's, it's gonna uh, do well. We'll go ahead and take a look at the armor view right now. And as you can see, the 32 millimeters all up front right there, very, very sturdy. If we go ahead and move, remove that, we can see just the impressive side armor on this vessel. Side armor up to 409 millimeters. So if you're angled correctly at close range, you will not be getting uh, hit in this thing, which is beautiful. And uh, there's the Citadel right there. As we can see, just at the waterline, maybe a little bit above it, 
But uh, beyond that, it, it's where you would expect an American Citadel to be. Uh, and it performs just as you would expect. Uh, you do have to be worried on uh, side impacts. Like if you're, if you're broadside to someone, they can't absolutely hurt you. But you have some pretty impressive armor. And if you know what you're doing and you understand how to angle, you're going to be fairly well secured. Also, one other thing. I love the little double hole down here where it, where it looks like it has butt cheeks. That's all. I'm just saying. It looks like the ship has butt cheeks. Anyways, uh, with all that said, uh, torpedo reduction on the vessel, 37%. Main battery, you have four three-barreled 406 millimeter guns, so 16, the American 16-inch guns. Firing range of 19.4 kilometers and a reload time of 30 seconds. That gives you a shelf per minute of 24. 180 time on those shells, 30, or on those turrets, 32.7 seconds. HE damage, 5,700, giving you a damage per minute of 136,800, which is on the low side for the legendary battleships. Uh, chance of fire on those shells, 36%. But AP is what you came here for, and that's what you want to know about. And, uh, well, 14,410 damage, giving you uh, 345,840. Now, with that 14,410, this ship does take the title of uh, heaviest broadside in the game away from Grosser Kohnfos. Though, just something to note, while the single Alpha Strike damage is higher assuming you hit all the shells, then the grosser. Your damage over time uh, is still higher in the grosser. It does have a slightly quicker reload, which means assuming you hit more shells in the grosser, you are going to do a higher amount of damage over time, but that's assuming you hit more shells in the grosser. And we all know how renowned German battleships are for their accuracy. Cough, cough, if you know what I mean. Uh, anyways, uh, DPM 344,840. I don't know if I had said that. Secondary batteries, it's going to have 10 two-barreled 127 millimeter guns with a firing range of six kilometers. Reload time is going to be four seconds. It's going to do 1,800 damage, and it's going to have a 9% chance to set fire. The ship doesn't have torpedoes, so we don't have to go over torpedo stats. It does, however, have very impressive AA, the best of any of the legendary Battleships, a 5.2 kilometer range with 157 minimum AA and a maximum of 669. And the heavy AA starts in like the middle range. So it's not even when uh, planes get close where that damage really starts to stack. This is a ship uh, is, is like one of the last ones you want to attack with your planes if you have the option. Maneuverability, max speed of the vessel, 27 knots with a turning race of 950 millimeter, or 950 meters, bringing it just short of that beautiful kilometer turning radius. Rudder shift time, 18.9 seconds, one of the longest of any of the legendary tier battleships. Concealment, 15.3 kilometers by sea, 12.8 kilometers by air, and 15.5 when firing in smoke. So... Those are all the stats of the Montana. Uh, overall, as far as the history goes of this ship, it was a designed vessel, one that I think they may have even started to build, but uh, basically we realized that battleships, not really a uh, uh, the, the what we should be investing our dollars and cents in, and uh, it did not make its way to sea. I think they might have started it. I know there's definitely like models of it built. So it, it like it got pretty far along as far as the history, as far as like it being built IRL, but it sadly never did get to see the seas. But uh, let me tell you, it's a very impressive ship in game. And with all that said, now let's go ahead and start to dive into a different game and we can go ahead and show off this ship and I'll give my thoughts on it. So here we are on Crash Zone, and uh, let me tell you, this is a pretty fun game and a pretty fun ship. Montana has quickly become my favorite of the legendary tier battleships, but I think it's because there's no real gimmick about it. It is just a good, hard-hitting battleship where if you know your positioning well, you are going to come out on top. If you can hit your shots, you're going to come out on top. It's it's just as simple as that. Anyways, Massachusetts pops up and he is broadside to us. And uh, what six, what uh, 12 uh, 16 inch guns do very well is punish enemy broadsides. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. Opening salvo 
of just 28,000 damage. And uh, let me tell you, that's not the first of uh, massive damage, and that's exactly what Montana is great at. Fantastic accuracy, uh, great range at nearly 20 kilometers. So uh, if you can position yourself in the central area of a map, you can absolutely uh, punish ships that are showing you broadside. And that's exactly what we're also going to do to this Bismarck, where we take, well, another, what, 30-ish thousand uh, damage from him, bringing us up to 54,000 with our second salvo. And then uh, he starts to turn out, I think, because he's like, ah, no. Or no, the island is blocking us. And the GK decides to start to turn and run. And uh, he starts to show us broadside. And we know what this ship does to broadsides. Uh, we have our fantastic accurate fire. And uh, here it comes. Yep, there we go. Uh, 75,000 with just three salvos. And let me tell you, if you hit citadels, it gets even nastier. But that is the best part of the Montana is it is just a consistent all around or all around great battleship and one that I have quickly grown to really love and one that uh will be I will be making sure to log in each day to get through my bureau progress on because uh it is a lot of fun. Sadly though, that's where we have to talk about the current state of the game because well the ship is fun. It's great. Um, it's, it'll be my go-to battleship, but legendary tier is kind of meh right now, right? The, the balance of legendary tier, uh, and tier seven by, uh, association, because there's not enough legendary tier ships for it as a ship, as a tier to really stand on its own means that, uh, the, the Montana, it's fun to take out, but the ecosystem in which you're operating isn't the healthiest. There aren't enough cruisers in legendary tier games. And as, as a, as a result of that, you'll just get games filled with legendary tier destroyers and legendary tier battleships, uh, and nothing really, uh, to counter the legendary battle or legendary destroyers. And like, let's be clear. Um, I think this is a fantastic ship, but, uh, I, I think uh, Wargaming is a, is doing a disservice by releasing it right now. Uh, I think right now what the tier needs is cruisers. Uh, we only have two of them. Or no, we have three of them. We have the two American ships, the Alaska and the Worcester. And we have the Stalingrad. And Stalingrad really didn't help with the the kind of middleman between count for countering destroyers at the tier. Uh, so really... We know we're getting Minotaur soon, but I don't think releasing one ship is going to solve the woes of this tier. It is going to need some TLC. And unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, unfortunately, uh, I don't know if Wargaming, if that's currently a priority for him. We can hope so, because the this, this tier really does need uh, legendary ships. Anyways, back to the game, because that was my little rant. Uh, we cleared out B and A, right? Uh, the grocer was kind of the last ship standing, and he fled A. So now our team has uh, secured A and B. That is two of the three points. A or uh, C has yet to be capped. So we are going to start uh, consuming a positive points delta. And look at just how beautiful uh, Montana's clusters are right there. That grouping. I, this is one of the things I do absolutely love about Montana, and I've noticed today is when shooting at uh, destroyers that are seven, eight, 10 kilometers away, you have the tight enough groupings to be able to confidently make those shots uh, and really stick them. Uh, it, the, the shell groupings have been absolutely beautiful. Just another reason why to just love this ship overall. Anyways, Baltimore, nice broadside, uh, turn it out. So we kind of aim up a little sadly uh, that that second salvo doesn't quite land where we need it to be. but. As far as strategy goes right now, we have B and A. Uh, it's time to kind of move in, try to find some broadsides to exploit. Kind of hold the line. We don't need to push into C to win this game anymore, right? Uh, if anything, we can kind of just keep nicking and knacking and uh, bothering the, the enemy team, uh, resetting them on the cap. I know our team is currently contesting them, but 
we can keep kind of bothering them on C and increasing our points delta because we have A and B. And, uh, well, we're going to keep getting those points, uh, which is exactly what we need to. Their their team has kind of sequestered themselves to C, so we will enjoy uh, taking A and B and just kind of holding the line, being defensive. We don't need to be aggressive. We don't need to push in too much. Uh, we just need to hold the line, essentially. Grocer, just outside, just like at the edge of our range where the flight time of the shells means he may not be in range or will get one or two, but he is so close to death that we really want to go after him, but we can't really open ourselves up. We need to be prepared for these ships to come around the corner there. So Zuya uh, starting to come around the corner. We're kind of split in our time. We see Grocer ended up using one of his heals, sadly, because uh, he recovered a good chunk of health right there. He was on just a slither of health, and we just need uh, some of these shells to land. Once you're out, out at the extreme ranges, uh, shell group is still good, but even at these long ranges, we can see um, Grocer has time to kind of maneuver and get out of the way of plenty of the shells and kind of turn into them. And, uh, you know, sadly, he's going to kind of start using his bow correctly and not giving us those, those juicy and succulent broadsides that we all do love. Um, yeah. Uh, back to Montana though. Uh, the ship, God, it's, it's so much fun to play. It is, is, it quickly became... Uh, my favorite of the legendary tier battleships. It doesn't really have a gimmick. It just performs well. Uh, and, it, and I think that may also just because the American battleships are what I kind of learned to play battleships in. So the archetypal just angle and you're going to have good accuracy uh, is maybe why I enjoy it. Now, what is going on here where our... our Aircraft carrier decided that pushing up the middle was the best plan for him. I do not know. But now it is kind of a, oh god, we need to protect this guy. Aircraft carriers, very important. We need to uh, to save him. We need to start hitting these shots because uh, I, I don't I don't know why, why we're sailing um, one of the most vulnerable ships straight through the middle. But yeah, sorry. That, that was just a weird moment in this game where I was like, oh... I mean, yes, I, I guess if I was paying attention on the map, I could have seen that he was doing it. But you don't expect an aircraft carrier player to be doing that, right? Anyways, uh, Massachusetts is nose in, which isn't going to be very fruitful for us. We're just going to get, you know, a couple of damage here and there. Just a couple uh, tens of thousands of hit points because, well, uh, Mass Massachusetts, the superstructure, very, very juicy. Grocer, we're looking at, and sadly, uh, he takes out our aircraft carrier because, well, of course he does. Uh, he ends up taking him out with the secondaries, but our aircraft carrier is going to get his revenge. We don't need to worry about the grocer anymore. So now it is just the the two remaining service ships, the Massachusetts, the, um, uh, I believe the Baltimore is still up, and then, of course, the enemy aircraft carrier. And this is where we can kind of start to get a little more aggressive, start to push in. Of course, we do only have five minutes in the match left, and I'm fairly confident, uh, given where um, where we are, that one of us can survive. I'm still at a fairly healthy amount of hit points, um, and it's going to take uh, a either me playing absolutely recklessly or them running some beautiful focused fires on me to uh, eliminate me or, you know, Sky Citadels. Because the enemy aircraft carrier is, of course, a Parseval, and uh, Sky Citadels are a thing, and uh, they, they can still hurt you. We are now down one ship. So Zuya, uh, 12, 12 kilometers out. Massachusetts, uh, behind a rock where we can't hit him, unfortunately, though he has taken a substantial amount of damage. We end up hitting uh, the Suzuya to get the Confederate medal right there, because as, as we've been going, we've just been kind of consistently chunking people for damage, and that is... You know, one of the strengths of Montana, if you know how to play battleships, um, you can just kind of leave that AP loaded. And if you can get into superstructures on angled battleships, or if you can just kind of hit some cruisers, you're going to be doing some damage. First Citadel out, or first uh, set of shots out. The second set, we kind of correct for his turn. We end up hitting him and getting the high caliber right there. So we're, we're definitely pulling our weight, of course. A uh, bunch of that damage came early in the game when we were able to hit 
those three broadsides that I guess was not expecting us. But now we're just kind of trying to s sail south, uh, kind of keeping an eye on the sky because Parseval is overhead um, and he can very much damage us. But if we notice, uh, he makes this run and then we don't really see him for a amount of time. I think given how late we are in the game, he may be displayed because uh, later in the game we will start to see the 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 squadrons he does send out are rather anemic in a plane count, which tells me he is uh, fairly well deplaned. And of course, Montana's uh, very very powerful AA suite definitely assists with that. Now. We do see uh, our destroyer is kind of working at sea, trying to hit the torpedoes, which we do appreciate. He's also keeping uh, the enemy spotted. Massachusetts, we're kind of coming around the corner here, getting ready to see if we can go ahead and start hurting him. Of course, he did have a substantial, uh, good chunk less health, health uh, just a couple minutes ago. He did end up using that heal right there, but we'll start engaging him now. Uh, he kind of knows where we are. We know where he is. We're going to turn in, uh, start to angle well because... Uh, we can be hurt by him. He does have 16-inch guns. If we were angled, we could take a fairly large hit. So Zoya now coming around the corner, and this is where we're going to start engaging him. Now, our destroyer, uh, I think it's a Fletcher, has uh, popped his smoke, which means he has a good chunk of time to go ahead and enjoy pestering the Suzuya, um, and we'll happily keep Suzuya spotted for him. Suzuya kind of angling towards the Fletcher, uh, also kind of sailing away from us, thankfully. Because he's kind of in this straight, he doesn't have much room to maneuver. And because of that, it just takes four well-placed shells to send him to the bottom of the sea. Uh, making that our first kill of the match at uh, 163,000 damage. Yeah, uh, Montana, great at getting the damage. Maybe not so great at securing kills. It, it is. It just, you know, depends on how you end up playing. But here, we finally got our first secure of the game. Uh... Time left on the clock, a, mi a, a minute 56. Uh, Massachusetts scores his high cal and confederate off of us right there. We just kind of have to stay angled in now. And we can see that uh, that the that the Percival is now starting to send his, his squadrons out at us. Uh, he has one full squadron left right here, which, uh, like we said earlier, he, he'd been waiting to probably charge them up. One, one plane ends up taking a dive before it's able to finish off its run, but sadly it does put its torps into the water. We take all three uh, torps right there, bring us down to 30,000 health. Uh, we are slowly and steadily losing uh, the hit points, but it really doesn't matter. We just kind of have to survive. Fletcher is in a good space where even he can kind of engage this Massachusetts uh, and not really worry about it. As long as uh, one of us survives this next minute, we will be okay. We're pushing into C. We're gonna start. Uh, we're gonna start preventing them from being able to accrue any more points. Kind of just expand that those points even more. And we can see uh, enemy dive bombers are coming in. We go ahead and launch our fighters, but sadly it is not going to be fast enough. We get one down, but uh, this is where it absolutely hurts. Twenty thousand hit. Uh, Twenty thousand from the sky and that hurts real bad we do end up finishing off that squadron fully deplaning the parseval uh, unfortunately we will not see the parseval we're going to come around the corner with just a little bit of time left in the match not enough time though to finish off massachusetts but enough to uh have had a good game to get this one last shot but yeah guys that's the montana like i said super consistent ship it's it's essentially uh, a fast kansas or a uh, iowa with a slow Iowa with uh, four uh, turrets. But guys, I, I absolutely love it. When legendary tier becomes more fun, um, I will probably, this will be my go-to battleship and it's going to be my go-to battleship. But guys, if you liked the video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. See ya.